What's up guys and welcome back to Tackling the World. We're getting our fire ready because we're about to cook some delicious meals. We've been back in the van for about uh, almost two weeks now, enjoying the nice spring weather of California. Check out how nice these beans are. They look like little cows. And this is why we're cooking it over the fire. They're gonna take like two hours and I don't wanna use up all of our electricity in the van. Plus cooking over the fire is so much more fun. And I'm gonna make uh, chili beans with cornbread once they're ready. I put kombu in my beans because it's supposed to help with um, gas. But this is the only piece I have left. Went ahead and moved it off the fire because I want it to, it's still kind of going a little too hard. There we go. Move it a little more. The beets are for lunch. Need a little olive oil. Just having a quick little lunch. Ignore my very beady hands. Got some fancy olive oil. Just a beet burrata, arugula, some oranges, and some pine nuts. Let's enjoy our little salad while we wait for our beets. We went for our beans. Our beans, sorry. Beets are ready. <laughs> I like doing slow campfire meals. Yeah, just chilling and cooking. All right, guys, we're just about ready to start making our chili bean cornbread. Don't mind my very beady cutting board. Half an onion, half a pound of venison, and you guys can use whatever ground meat you like, or even the impossible meat works pretty well. Yep, put some chili. Ancho chili as well. Put a little bit of bell pepper. Let's start throwing in our other ingredients. We don't have a scooper, so this is what we're using. Some canned tomatoes. This is just for two, so I think I'm only using half a can. Getting quite full in here. Or some kind of chicken stock would be good too. A little bit of beer. Little for me. The rest are talking. Touch of sweetness. A little bit of cumin. Oops. I think that'll leave it enough space to grow. Right. I'm gonna put I think eleven to hit three fifty. Now we just gotta wait 35 to 45 minutes. Baking is a science, and cast iron baking is more of a science experiment. Because <laughs> I'm not quite using like sizing the pans that I would normally use, and then I don't have a thermometer, so I'm not like taking exact temperature. But it's pretty fun to do it anyways this way. Life would be a lot easier with a thermometer and also a metal tongs that I have no idea where they went. Nearly been 35 minutes, so I'm gonna say it's probably done. Oh, yeah, that's a nice cornbread. Yeah, it's she pretty. Yeah, feels nice. Yeah, so good. Chili beans and cornbread. All right, let's serve ourselves. Ooh, Ooh, look at Ooh that. that's a nice cornbread. That is nice cornbread. Look Good. at that. Wow. Well done. Thank you. I'm always happy when my cast iron stuff comes out good. I love that these beans also stayed like the cow ones. Yeah, the cow color. Yeah. I assumed it would lose its color. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Yeah. Let's taste it. Um, if I'd known these beans held their color after cooking, I would have bought them sooner. A little flaky sea salt to finish. Let's try this 
cream bread. I already topped it with sour cream, green onions, and a little bit of shredded cheese. Mmm. Yeah, that's fluffy. This cornbread is really good. Mm -hmm. It's a nice little sweetness to it. See you guys at the next meal. Good morning, guys. Today we're making chilaquiles for breakfast. And we've already cooked the salsa ingredients over the fire the other night, so we're good to go. Just gonna make tortillas. We don't have actual tortillas, we just have masa, so making everything from scratch today. All right, testing out a tortilla right now. Not ready to flip yet. Austin is uh, blending her salsa all the way over there because there's a uh, outlet. Hmm. Could use another chili, but I guess it's breakfast. We could go easy. Right now we're just frying them directly. And we gotta cook our salsa. I always get asked about this too, and for like chilaquiles and chiladas, you always cook your salsa for like dipping salsa, you don't cook it. Or for topping your tacos, you don't cook that salsa, typically. Mm, do you smell that? <sighs> it's nice. Now we're gonna top this with a fried egg, some sour cream. If you've never had Mexican crema, it's way better than like, for what's that brand, Daisy? Whatever that common sour cream Daisy brand is, this stuff is way better. It's just annoying having to go to like multiple different grocery stores all the time. And there's usually some kind of like dairy counter at a Mexican market. So it's even better than if you buy something that's in their fridge section. Some cotija, of course. This one though is cotija enchilado. And uh, it's like a more potent version some onions. We like a good amount of fresh onions on ours. I have a very ripe avocado, so I'm just gonna put that with them as well. Oh, pretty nice one too. There you go, some chilaquiles. Yum. Let's eat these guys. See the. The yolk run. Crispy. Avocado. Crispy tortilla. Mm. Mm. These are really good tomatoes. Mm. So much flavor in them. Um, Cotija is a little different. Mm -hmm. Even more funkiness. Yeah. It's like not as um, salty, mm -hmm. but it's like more funky. Yeah. I don't know if it's because I'm older now, mm -hmm. but when I was younger, we used to get that cheese from Mexico because we couldn't find it here. Mm -hmm. And it was always 10 times stronger. So I'm curious to know if it's just Mexico, it's a lot stronger, or if I've just developed a taste for it. Maybe a little bit of both. Yeah. I guess we'll see you guys for the next meal. Mm. Our last little camp meal, lasagna. I'm gonna cook some of the aromatics. Yeah, onion. And for some ground meat. This one's actually plant-based. I haven't tried this brand before. Usually you go with impossible meat or with wild meat. I should have my garlic. Kind of like impossible meat because it's also red, so I can tell when it's cooked. This not so much, it's already brown. The key to really good lasagna is making your own sauce, but we're out here in the outdoors with a limited kitchen, so jar stuff it is. That's good. Saucy meat mixture looking pretty good. 
Time to start layering. There's a bit of meat sauce. And this isn't traditional, but I like to put greens any way I can into food. Put arugula on pizza. Why not in lasagna? A little bit of mozzarella. Do three types of cheese in there? Yeah, there's three types of cheese. Let's see if it makes it melty and the other stuff makes it more flavor. I guess I could just keep laying until I run out of meat. Yeah, just two. Ten layer lasagna, why not? Well, it won't fit in there, but... <laughs> <laughs> Is that enough ricotta? I think that's enough ricotta. Okay. More arugula, because why not? You like this. Usually it's shredded mozzarella, but this is what we have. Good night. We're going to bake this at 375, so that's usually about uh, 11 coals on top and 6 on the bottom. But we have a little tiny fire going under, so we're just going to do the 11 one on top and have it kind of high up above. It should be fine. Should be about 25 minutes and then we'll be eating lasagna. Alright, let's give her a look. She should be ready. Ready? Yeah. And Pop her open. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, she got a little toasty. Nice. Ooh, hot. Alright, I'll just move this uh, to the side to cool down. Okay. Whenever you're ready to cut. Okay, it's time to cut this. In quarters, probably. Yeah. A little crusty on top. Mm. You need a knife. Mm. Just cut through the top. Don't do this to your cast iron at home. Talk as a professional. <laughs> <laughs> It's a chilly evening today. Mm. Mm. The meat's alright. The fake meat. I like this with arugula a lot. Yeah, it's really good. Really good. Mm. Nice and cheesy. It's got perfectly cooked layers of lasagna and with that top one being crispy, cheesy, crunchy, that's a combo to die for. If you make this at camp, I recommend making your meat sauce with your homemade red sauce at home. That way you spend less time cooking, less mess. Easy for us because we have a van and a sink to wash dishes. I love New Zealand, but I really did miss fires. You have a lot of restrictions on fires because 
a lot of native bush and you know birds as well if the if the trees catch on fire on accident and a lot of the native species die so they really, can't fly yeah they can't <laughs> fly and get away um so they're really uh uh conscious of that so a lot of areas you're not allowed to have open fires there are huge fire restrictions they sometimes still let you use coals sometimes you definitely if you're on the west coast you have to check what your fire regulations are currently right now it's been super rainy it's still like fall or sorry spring so early spring yeah so it's still cold out everything's still damp wet um yeah i can't say no it's fire muddy. danger yeah the ricotta is really good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yum yeah that ricotta brand i like that one. Mm. I could definitely eat more. I think we'll pace, I'll pace Keep myself. Yourself. Should I? Do we need those leftovers? We don't need them, so if you're hungry. They're kind of big too. I'm hungry. I'm not hungry, but I could eat it. I could <laughs> easily eat that. Yeah. I think that's going to be everything for our um, camp meals series, I guess. Yeah, and that wasn't even all of them. You can check out more on Outdoor Chef Life, what we cooked there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and then we didn't even record. We made sopas the other day. Mm, yeah. Yeah. There's quite a few meals we don't record just because we forget. Forget, or it's just we just want to eat. Yeah, that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we've been we've been living out of the van, just camping in a couple different campsites for uh, two weeks now. Yeah. And we've been off grid the entire time. Uh, it's pretty nice. It's nice. We have no cell reception here. The only time we do have Wi-Fi is when I turn the Starlink on. And that's not too often. Just maybe one or two hours a day. Um, because it takes energy. And today is overcast. Uh, we don't have unlimited power. We're just running off solar right now. So it's been restricting. But it's been nice. Yeah. Being, being restricted off the internet. I've just been working on writing my cookbook and writing a ton of recipes uh, while, while we have this time. I feel like I could eat more. All right, let's do it. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not hungry either, but... Let's do it. I could do it. All right. I don't need leftovers. I don't know if I'm going to eat all of that, but... Well, it's like this. Your it's... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been nice having you here for our dinners. It's been nice being back, having fires, cooking on the campfire. Uh, if you liked the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.